So uh, it says write the recursive expl an explicit equation for each sequence. Oh wow, and find uh, a of one hundred. So, um, what is happening on the first sequence? What's happening every time? How do I get from sixteen? Oh, helps if I actually have a pin, huh? Sixteen to twenty-three, twenty-three to thirty, thirty to thirty-seven. What am I doing every time? Anybody? Nine. I'm adding nine. We're multiplying nine. Thirty plus nine is thirty-seven. Thirty plus nine. You're adding seven. Good. We're adding seven. Are you okay with that, Kaitlyn? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> adding seven. So that's why I was like, we're adding nine. Okay. So and then remember, I'm gonna make a um. A, Ten table, and this is term one, term two, term three, term four, and I need to find term zero. So what do I add? What number do I add seven to to get sixteen? Hmm. So if I had to go back to term zero, nine. yeah, good, nine. Term zero would be nine. So remember, that gives me everything I need um, for my formula. So I'm going to just write them off to the side. So because, um, I mean, it has been a couple days since we've seen them. So my recursive formula is f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus my common difference. And then my starting point, right? F of 1 equals some number. And then my explicit is F of X equals MX plus B, right? Where M is my common difference. This is my common difference. And this is my uh, zero, the term. Okay. So, um, what is my recursive? I'm just going to put recursive right here. Recursive equation is going to be F of X equals F of X minus one. That part never changes. It's always the same. And then I just put in my common difference, whatever it is. In this case, it is plus seven. And then I need my starting point, which is f of 1. And what does f of 1 equal? What's my first term? 16. Mm -hmm. Very good, 16. Done. Okay, and then we want my rec uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. explicit equation. And we've got f of x equals my common difference in this case is 7 again, 7x. And then my zeroth term, we found that, my zeroth term is plus 9. Done. So once I, actually, you guys, once I find everything right here, all I'm doing is substituting in to these two equations over here. That's it. So once I find all my information in my little table I made, then all I'm going to do is substitute in. Okay, and then I need to find, what do I need to find? F of 100. Ooh. So 7 times 100 plus 9. 700 plus 9 or 709. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for the next sequence. Exact, exactly the same thing. So... How do I get from negative 26 to negative 30, negative 30 to negative 34, and negative 34 to negative 38? What am I doing? Good, Alex. I am subtracting 4. 
Oh. Are you okay with that? See, Ollie? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. It's not adding for... I just want to... Let me mark Khaleesi here. It's not adding for... How, come, how do I know it's not adding for? Because it's getting more negative. If I was adding for, it would get more positive. Okay? It'd get closer to zero, not further away from zero. If it's negative, I'm getting further away from zero. I'm subtracting. Does that help a little bit? And then um, let's go back here. Make a table. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then my zeroth term, right? I'm going to add four this time because I'm getting smaller or closer to zero. Happens to be negative 22. Alex put that in the, oh, Alex put that in the chat. So that's why I just went ahead and did it before I asked. He gave me the answer before I even asked the question. So negative 22. So now I have all the information I need right here to uh, just fill in my two, two equations. My recursive will say f of x equals f of x minus 1 minus 4. And then my first term is negative 26. And then we've got my explicit, which is f of x is going to equal negative 4x plus my zero, uh, my zero term, which is negative 22. And then we're going to put in, um, what are we putting in? Uh, 100. So f of 100 is going to be negative 4 times 100 minus 22. Negative 400 minus 22. Negative 422. Okay, questions? Okay, we're going to move on to, um, what are we moving on to? Geometric sequences. Okay. So, a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous by the same number. So, after the first term, I'm multiplying by the same number every time. And what is that number? Well, neg 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 times um, negative 3 is positive 9 times times negative 3 is negative 27, times negative 3 is positive 81, times negative 3. Okay, got it? So basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by the same number every time. And sometimes if I can't figure out what I'm dividing by, I can do this. I can take, um, wrong thing, this number and divide by this number, or this number divide by this number or this number divided by this number, or this number. Does that make sense? So I'm taking one number and dividing by the number before it. So I would take, um, and you can just do this in your calculator, right? I can take negative 243 and divide by, by 81, and I get negative 3. It goes in there three times, negative 3 times. So that would give me what I'm multiplying by. So if I'm not sure what I'm dividing by, I can take um, one number and divide it by the previous number. And then if you do that a couple times, just to make sure I'm dividing by the same number every time, then you know what you're, what you're multi multiplying by. Okay? Um, so what are we doing here? I can't read the directions. Tell whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric, then write the next two terms of the sequence. Why is that? Why is that number? Why is that see that just there in the middle of nowhere? So strange that it's just hanging out there. Okay, I don't think it's supposed to be there. I think I was probably supposed to delete this part right here. So, I'm like, why is it just hanging out there with no number or letter in front of it? Okay. 
So is this sequence number one arithmetic or geometric? Am I adding the same number every time or am I multiplying the same number every time? So it's not getting a lot bigger every time. So this is how I kind of tell if I'm thinking about it being um, geometric or arithmetic. If it's geometric, it gets bigger a lot faster, so the numbers are much wider apart. So if I look at this, the numbers don't seem to be getting wider apart. They seem to be staying about the same distance apart. So it's probably not geometric. So I'm just going to see if it's arithmetic. So what do I add to 4 to get 8? Well, that would be plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16, 16 plus, so I'm adding 4 every time. So this is arithmetic. Everyone okay with that? Questions? Okay. So what are my next two terms in that sequence? If I'm just adding 4, what would they be? Catlin? Yeah. What's my next two terms? So what's the last term in the sequence? For number two? Oh, for number one. Um, 20. And what am I doing every time? Nice, Khaleesi. Okay, so what's my next term then? 24. Okay, and what's the one after that? 23. There you go. You do know. Good job. Okay, now we're going to do the next one and do the same thing, okay? So I think the next one might be a little harder, though. Um, so am I, am I multiplying the same number or am I adding the same number? Well, you can see that the difference between here and here is 1, and the difference between here and here is 4. So obviously I'm not adding the same number. I'm going to be... Um, Let's see if I'm multiplying the same number or, yes, multiplying the same number. So how, <laughs> so, um, I think it might be easier if we look at it backwards first. If I look at it going this direction first and see what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to look at it going from in the opposite direction first. So how do I get from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 8? I know they're negative, sorry. Negative 1 to negative 2, negative 2 to negative 4, negative 4 to negative 8. What am I doing to that? And I'm multiplying by some number. So what number am I multiplying by? Or you could look at it the reverse direction too. What do I do to negative 8 to get to negative 4? And what do I do to negative 4 to get to negative 2? And what do I do to negative 2 to get to negative 1? I don't care which way. Good. In the opposite direction, yes. Good, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> so in the opposite direction, I'm mul multiplying by 2. If I'm going in this direction, I'm multiplying by 2. But I really want to, since my sequence is going in this direction, I can't say I'm dividing by 2 because our definition of a geometric sequence says what? I just want to highlight this real quick. It says I'm multiplying. So I can't say I'm dividing, even though that's technically what I'm doing. So I have to put divide in terms of multiply is what I have to do. And if, I, if I'm dividing by 2, that's the same as multiplying by 1 half. All I'm going to do is put the, whatever I'm dividing by usually in the denominator. And I can do the same thing that I did um, for the subtract sign, I mean for the, um, oh, what am I talking about? So sorry, I'm like, hold on, the same thing. The, I can do what I did up here, right? I can do this, I can take this number, the previous number, 
and divide it by that number, that makes it really easy. If I take negative one and I divide it by negative two, oh, that's one half. So I'm multiplying by one half, okay? So because I'm multiplying by the same number, that means it's a geometric, and I'm not gonna spell it all out because I'm not a very good speller that you guys already know. So I need to know, this is the hard part, and this is gonna be a hard part because it's gonna be fractions what the next two terms are in my sequence after negative one. What would be my next term after negative one? So basically I'm taking half of it, right? What's half of negative one? Hmm. Anybody? That is so close, Khaleesi. But remember, it's half of negative. Yeah, there you go. Good. And then half of negative. So, so my next term is negative one half. What's half of a half? Woo. Mm. So... If I have half a candy bar, right? I have a candy bar. I cut it into half. And then I take half of that. Do I have zero left? There you go. One fourth. Good. I was like, how can I put this that it makes sense? Good, Khaleesi. Negative one, ha uh, one fourth. I have a fourth, right? So if I have a whole candy bar, I cut it in half. I have half. And I cut a half in half. I have a fourth. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. So now what I want you guys to do, I want you to try A and B on your own. And I want you to give me, um, if it's geometric or arithmetic, and the next two terms. Okay. So, I'm okay. so here we go. Um, so what am I doing on the first one every time? 128 to 64, 64 to 32, 32 to 16, 16 to 8. If I'm not sure, remember multiplying by one half. Yes, I'm multiplying by one half. Great. And if I'm not sure, remember, I can take 164. Sorry. I can take, uh, I'll take the smaller one because it's easier. I can take 8 and divide by 16. And 8 goes into 8 once and into 16 twice, so it's 1 half. Remember, I can take one term and divide by the previous term, and it would tell me what it is. And then to find my next ter ter two terms, half of 8 is 4, half of 4 is 2, and there we go, done for that one. And then for the next term, uh, the next sequence, so sorry, what am I doing? 2 to 6, 6 to 18, 18 to 54, 54 to 162. Uh, well, how do I get from 2 to 6? So I'm pretty sure I'm multiplying by 3. And then I know that 3 times 6 is 18. And then I'd have to pull out my calculator, right? But I know that 18 times 3 is 54. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, it 54 times 3 is 162. Then I'm definitely going to have to get my calculator out. 162 times 3 is 486. And then times three again is 1,458. So I only had to find two terms. Is that okay? Anybody have any questions? Are we okay with that? Because, uh, you know, on your checkpoint, you'll have to find the next couple terms in a sequence, right? And on your homework today, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're going to define a word or two, well, just actually one word, but I need to get my definition out so I can get it right. Um, so we're gonna talk about graphing a geometric sequence. Um, so to graph a geometric sequence, we're gonna, uh, once again, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing as we did when it was an arithmetic sequence. We're gonna create a table uh, where, where 
uh, where the terms position position I think that's right in the sequence is the X value okay just like what we did before when we made the table right I'm gonna make um, um, a uh, this is this oh okay so if the terms position is the X value that means my sequence is my Y values so I'm going to go ahead and write that in 1, negative 3, 9, negative 27, 81, negative 243, dot, dot, dot. Of course, when we're making, when we're sketching tables, we're not really making a table. We're making a, we are making a table. We're just sketching it in. We're not making a fancy table like this. I guess that's what I should say. And then number one is term one and negative three is term two and nine is term three, negative 27 is term four, 81 is term five, and negative 243 is term six, dot, 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 and it keeps going. And that's how I make a table. And then if I wanted to graph it, I would just graph these points. Um, an X value and a Y value, right? So this one would be the point one, one, two, negative three, three, nine, four, negative 27, probably never graph 581, or six, negative 243, because on our grass we wouldn't get it that big. But we're gonna practice doing that now. So um, let's go ahead and look at a couple graphs and make a table. Oh, so sorry. A couple examples here. And of course, you guys know that there's no way for you to show a graph in the chat box, so we're just gonna do it together. Um, so I'm gonna make my table, right? just like this, and I'm gonna say this is term one, term two, three, four, five, and six, okay? And I think it might, my table might actually go up to eight. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, my graph, sorry, my graph goes up to eight. So I can actually graph all of these points on my, on my graph, which is kind of cool. So at point one, I'm sorry, at X value one, my y value is a fourth, so it's gonna kind of be down here. And at two, it's at a half, which is kind of right in there. And at three, it's at one. And a two, it's at four. Two, three, four. Oh, no, I think I so totally read that one wrong. Sorry, at uh, four, it's at two, see, I can't even read. One, two, three, four, at four, it's at two, there we go. At five, it's at four, one, two, three, four. And at six, it's eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there we go. And again, I can't connect the points, just like when we did on the, on the arithmetic ones, I can't connect the points, because I don't know, I'm gonna make them a little bigger though. Um, because I don't know if if it's a continuous function. We just know that it's a sequence, and the sequences are not connected, so I can't connect them, okay? So it'd just be a graph of points that look like that. Okay, so we're gonna still do the other one, same way. Um, so I've got term one, term two, term three, Term four, term five. Okay, so these are counting by, um, these are counting by, uh, I think the easiest way to graph this would be by, um, I know I don't have 27 on here, but if I counted by threes, it might work. Um, so let's, uh, if I said this was three, this was six, and this is 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. I think I can graph this on the graph. So I'm just going to change my values and my y values. And along the x values, I'm still going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that count by 1. So... I have 1 and 27. 
and then two and nine on three and three and four and one and five and a third it's almost touching okay so that's kind of what that one looks like that's it is there any question are we okay with that with graphing it just turn it into a table and graphing the points okay that's it that's all there is to it okay if you ever have to do that that's how it's done okay so now we're going to talk about the recursive and the explicit yeah we're going back to recursive and explicit equation only this time it's for a geometric equation okay so we're going to start with the recursive equation it's going to look very, very, very similar to my um, recursive equation for an arithmetic sequence. So it still says I take my first term to get my to get my next term. I'm going to spell it out in words first. So next, uh, I'm going to spell it out in words first before I put it in equations. To get my next term, I take my previous, previous, sorry, previous term times my common ratio. That's what I'm multiplying by every time, right? And then, of course, I have my starting point. That's the same, starting point. You passed? Yes. Sorry, my son just passed math after not five years. Five years of trying hey, to pass. I did the last two semesters. Leave me alone. Okay. Very excited. He's not very good at math either, you guys. But if you keep up and keep working at it, you can pass it too in college. It just takes a while. No, I think you guys will do better. He's just really, really, really bad at math. So, very glad that he finally passed. Okay, so, um, so if I'm going to put this in math terms, remember, it's the same thing. It's going to look exactly the same except for one thing. So, my next term is f of x. Okay, that stays the same. My previous term of, is f of x minus 1. Okay, that stays the same, right? And then I'm going to multiply by my common ratio. And then I have f of 1 equals my first term, whatever my first term of my sequence is. So notice the only thing that changed, instead of adding, this time I'm multiplying. And just to, as a little side note here, I'm going to write this again. Sometimes it might look like this, f of x equals my common ratio, f of x minus 1. You can write it that way. Because remember, I can multiply in any order. So that means this multiplication can come in front of the f of x minus 1 and instead of behind it. So you may see it like in uh, the delta math. You might see it the other way, this way. Um, oh, we're not doing delta math. Never mind. But you might see it on, let me think, on um, the end of the year test that we have to take. At least what they told us we have to take it. So um, you might see it in front of the f of x minus 1 instead of in b. Oh, what am I talking about? This is sec 1 stuff. You guys aren't going to be taking the sec 1 test. Duh. Okay. Forget I said that. Okay. So uh, that's uh, the recursive equation. And then we have our explicit equation, which uh, looks just like our exponential equation it in fact it is a geometric sequence is an exponential equa uh, exponential function so it looks like this y equals a times b to the x power where a is my zeroth term and b is my common ratio okay so Remember this, write this down, take a picture of it, 
I don't care what you need to do. Because remember, once we find, once we make my little, make, make our little table, we have all of our information for these two equations. Then all we have to do is take them out and substitute our values in. That's it. Okay, and what, sub, what values do we substitute in? I'm going to, like, we're going to substitute in this value. Our common ratio, our first term, our zeroth term, and our common ratio. And those are the only thing that changes. Everything else stays the same. Everything stays the same. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? Shall we do some examples? Okay. I want to kind of leave this here. Okay. So on my first problem, it says... Uh, Write the recursive and explicit equation for each sequence. Then find A7. Notice it didn't say A for 100 because 100, it, 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 it would be really, really huge. So we're just going to find A to the 7th power. Uh, okay, so here we go. I'm going to change this into a table. Oops. Dang it. hate it when I do that, you guys. Okay. I'm going to change this into a table. So this is term one, term two, term three, term four, term five. So what's happening every time to get from one term to the next term? Oh, there's Jonathan. How am I getting from one to negative five and negative five to 25 and 25 to negative 125? And... Negative 125 to 625. What am I doing? So, we know that these are all geometric. So, we know we're multiplying by something, if that's a little bit of a, a help. So, I'm multiplying by something. Yes, Khaleesi. So all these work, all this work today, you're multiplying by something, okay? So just think of it that way. I'm just multiplying by something. So I am multiplying by ne negative 5 because what do you multiply 1 by to get negative 5? Well, negative 5. And then negative 5 times negative 5 gives me positive 25. So I'm multiplying by negative 5 everything. So my common ratio is negative 5. That's one of my things I need to find. I already have my first term. Now I need to find my zeroth term. Once I find my zeroth term, I have everything I need for my equations. Okay? So, what's my zeroth term? Let's see if you guys can figure this one out. Oh, I need to add a name down here. Mmm. Anybody else going to answer in the chat box other than Esther, Alex, and Khaleesi? Mm, what is it as a fraction? Can I ask that question, Khaleesi? So let me, let me, oh, sorry, you guys. Let me say, let me put it this way. Going in, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to restate this question. Going in from left to right, I'm going to draw on here and then I can erase it. So going this way, I'm multiplying by negative 5, right? Yes, Khaleesi, good. Um, going backwards, almost. Sorry, I had to look at the thing. Going backwards, right? If I'm going backwards... I would be multiplying by negative one fifth, right? So we already decided if I'm not if I'm dividing, I would be dividing by the reciprocal of that, right? So if I'm going backwards, I'm dividing, right? What six twenty five to one twenty five, one twenty five, twenty five, twenty five to right? I'm dividing. So what do I multiply? I'm dividing by negative one, negative five, right? Going up. So 
Oh, I don't want to say it that way. I don't want to say it that way. Let me, um, let me erase this. Um, how do I want to say it, actually? That might be the easiest way. So you could think of it this way also. I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to say it two different ways. And I might go back to that thought. Um, but sometimes I think it's a little messy. Um, so I'm thinking about what number. So I'm just going to use, what number have I not used over here? What number, and I'm just going to use H. What number do I multiply by 5 to equal 1, right? So basically there's some number here, which is I'm going to call H. And I'm multiplying it by, oh, I said 5 and then I wrote 1. I'm so sorry. What number do I multiply by negative 5 and get an answer of 1, right? So here it says I multiply 1 by negative 5 to get negative 5. So there's some number H that I'm multiplying by negative 5 and getting an answer of 1. Does everyone understand that? Okay. So what is that number that I'm multiplying by that negative 5? That's what I'm looking for. So that's a way to look at it. Um, so what is it? Well, I'm going to divide by negative 5. So H is going to be negative one-fifth. Khaleesi, are you okay with that? Remember, it's negative. So this would be negative one-fifth. So now I want to go back to the arrow thing that I was talking about. So if I'm going this way, I'm multiplying by 5. If I'm going this way, I'm dividing by, I'm sorry, I'm multiplying by negative 5. So if I'm going this way, I am multiplying by negative 5. If I'm going backwards, I'm dividing by negative 5, right? I know that um, I, I said we're not talking about um, dividing, but I'm not talking about my common ratio now. I'm just talking about what we're doing to the sequence. I'm dividing by negative 5. So what's 1 divided by negative 5? Well, it's negative 1 fifth. That's it. I take this number right here, and I divide by that number. 1 divided by negative 5 would be negative fifths. If it was... Um, if it was, if this number happened to be two, if this was two, it'd be two over negative five. Okay, so I'm just taking whatever this last number is and dividing by whatever I'm multiplying by. So I, I thought I needed to do this one first before I did the arrow because it just seemed to make a little bit better sense. I don't know if it did or not. Did that help, Esta? I did it like three different ways, so I don't know if one of them, if one of them helped you or not. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> So again, now that I have all my information, right? Remember, I said I only needed, I needed, um, what did I need up here? I needed my common difference right here. I've got it. I needed my first term, and I needed my zeroth term. And my I have everything I need to write both my equations with now. Um, so I'm going to write my, um, what am I going to write? My recursive equation. Try and get a pen, Campbell. My recursive equation first. So I'm going to write my recursive equation. Well, what do I need for my recursive equation? I need my common ratio and my first term. And that's all. I'm going to write everything else the same. So it's going to be f of x equals f of x minus 1 times negative 5. And I can write times as a parenthesis. So times two parentheses touching each other means times. So I can write it just like that, done, times negative 5. And then f of 1, my first term is 1. It happens to be 1. Okay. And then I have my explicit equation. My explicit equation, what do I need for that? Well, I need my zeroth term here, and I need my common rate. Well, I have both of those, too. So I'm just going to substitute them in again. Um, so instead of y, I'm going to use f of x. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know why I put y there f of x equals my zeroth term, which is negative one-fifth, times my common ratio, which is negative five to the x power. Okay? And then they want me to find f of seven, which is gonna be negative one-fifth times negative five to the seventh power. Ooh. which if I'm going to put this in my calculator, I could put it in this way. I could say negative 5 
in parentheses to the seventh power divided by negative five, which is going to equal, I don't know what it's going to equal. Where's my Desmos calculator at? Desmos. I'm going to show it to you guys. I don't know. I, I've showed it to you on the count computer, right? But it is an app. Oh, I can't see my count. I can't see my. It is an app right here, Desmos. You can put it on your phone also. Um, so it is Desmos. It's a free app. And it's much, much less confusing than your uh, uh, iPhone calculator. I just want to say that. The calculator and iPhone is kind of confusing. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. And I'm going to say negative 5 parentheses to the seventh power divided by negative five. And that equals 15,625. And I wrote way into my other, I forgot, I needed to write. Let me rewrite that. Um equals 15,625. Okay. So now we're going to try the next one, and we're going to do exactly the same thing, you guys. Um, I'm going to just draw a little line down here since... Try and make this one smaller. Okay. So what did I do to get from 54 to 18? 18 to 6, 6 to 2... What did I do this time? Anybody? What am I multiplying by? Let me ask, nice Alex, let me ask this question for those, those of you. Um, if I take 54 times the number you told me, am I going to get 18? Because a couple of people answered different things. So if I take 54 times 3, do I get 18? Do I take, if I take 54 times 2, do I get 18? Hmm, no, I'm going to get a bigger number. Remember, I'm going smaller this time. So if I'm going smaller, it's not going to be 3. It's going to be what? If I'm going this direction, if I was going, the, if my sequence was in this direction, and it was 2, 6, 18, 54, then I thought it was 3. Then it would be 3. Oh, oh, sorry, Esther. No. We're on two. I didn't even see. I didn't even. I didn't even look at. I didn't even look at three. Sorry. Um, so if I was going in this direction, it would be three. But I'm going in this direction, so I'm multiplying by one third. If I'm getting smaller, I'm multiplying by a fraction. Does that help? Okay, so what's my zeroth term? Oh, this one's going to be fun. Oh, I should probably find out what it is. Okay. Yes, yes, it is, Esther, good. 162. And how do we find that? I took 54 and multi I went backwards. I multiplied by 3. So it's 162. So now do I have all the terms I need is the question. All the information I need. Well, I have my first term. I have my zeroth term. And I have my common ratio. So, yeah, I have everything that's needed to write my two equations. So here I'm going to go. Um, so I have f of x equals f of x minus 1 
times one third. And then my starting point is f of one equals 54, okay? My explicit equation says f of x equals m, which is my, what is m? My, oh, my, zero, sorry, not m, whew, is uh, a, which is my zero term. My zero term is 162 times my common ratio, which is one third to the x power. Okay, and then I want to find f of 7, so it's 162 times, oops, oh, no, some days, you guys, I'm just going to erase the whole thing, 162 times 1 third to the 7th power. So now I'm gonna put that into my calculator, into Desmos, because um, 162, oh, uh, 162, is that 162? It is 162, times one divided by three, parenthesis, oh, parenthesis, to the seventh power. Hmm. I'm going to get some really weird decimal. So I want to actually see if I can actually figure it out. Two, three, four. Ooh, no, I'm not going to actually figure I'm going to, I'm going to use the decimal because I'm going to get some weird thing. Um, what was it again? 162. Oh, clap, crap. 162 times one divided by three arrow out of that parenthesis to the seventh power. That should be point zero seven four. Okay. Just put it in your calculator. If unless you can find out what it is as a fraction, which in this case it was way too much work, so we weren't gonna do that. Okay? Okay. So let's go to number three. And I'm going to turn it into a table. How am I getting from one term to the next term? Esther already said it, but can somebody else put it in there? Multiply by two, yes. I'm multiplying by two, beautiful. Okay, so, oh, nice question. What's my zero term? Yes, Esta, good. My zero term is, remember, so, so if I'm going backwards, it's taking half of this, right? 18 is half of 36. 9 is half of 18. So what's half of 9? Well, you can put it in decimal form if you want. I usually like um, fraction form just because it's much easier just to write 9 divided by 2, right? Yeah, 9 halves, that's it right? Um, so unless you know what the decimal form is really quickly, it's just really easily, really easy to do that. And then I'm going to make sure I have everything I need. I have my zero term, I have my first term, and I have my common difference. So we should be able just to write, oh, I keep losing my pen, write out our equations. Oh, I keep doing that today, you guys. Um, my recursive equation says f of one equals f of one, oh no, f of x minus one, wow, okay. f of x minus one 
times 2. And then I have my starting point, which is f of 1 equals 9. My explicit equation says f of, oh, you guys, did I really say that? I did, didn't I? I said f of 1. I'm so sorry. f of x, and I even think I said f of x, and I put f of 1. Okay. f of x equals a, which is a is my zero term, right? So a is my zero term, which is 9 halves times 2 to the x power. So then I want to find f of 7. So I'm going to take 9 halves times 2 to the 7th power. And I am just going to put that into my calculator. So I get, what do I get? 9 divided by 2 divided by 2, arrow over, times 2 to the 7th power, equals 576. Here. All the lights died. Oh, fingers? No, they, they go off. Oh, they go off at a certain time. Yes. Good idea. Okay. Oh, are you all done? Okay, number four, same thing, um, make a table. Make sure you're asking questions, you guys. Oh, nice job. Other than, is, is there anybody else? If you're struggling, you guys need to be asking me questions, right? If you don't understand what I'm doing. There's only two people right now, sometimes three, answering questions in the chat box, okay? You need to make sure you're saying something because if not, I'm just going to keep going. So what am I doing every time here? So what am I doing to get from negative 81 to 27, 27 to negative 9, negative 9 to 3? Uh, super close, Esther. Yes, Alex. I'm multiplying by negative 1 third. Is that okay, Esther? Because how do I know it's negative? Because... In my sequence, I have one negative, one positive, one negative, one positive. And so I know I'm, I'm multiplying by a negative. Does that help? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. Ne yeah, yeah. Okay. So then I need my zero term. What is my zero term? That is a good question. Um, what is that? 81, 243 times 3. Yeah, 243. And it's positive. So 243, positive 243. So do I have everything I need? Well, I have my zero term, my first term, and my common ratio. I have everything I need. So I'm going to write my recursive equation. F of x equals f of x minus 1 times a third. My starting point, f of 1 equals negative 81. Explicit, f of x equals my starting point. Sorry, I have to think about that. 243, not my starting point, my zeroth term times my common difference, common ratio. And then f of 7 is going to be 230, oh, wow, 243. It is 43. It is 43. Okay, 243. I just wrote it backwards here. A little dyslexic. 243. Okay. Thanks, Khaleesi. <laughs> Times one third to the seventh power is, is, come on, 
243 times 1 divided by 3. Oh, that, that didn't get a divide in. Divided by 3, parenthesis, to the 7th power. Oh, 0. 0.111 repeated. Or 1 ninth, good. 1 ninth. Oh yeah, that's good. One ninth. Questions? Are we okay so far? All right. How are we doing on time, you guys? It's got done doing. Uh, we are not going to finish this today. It's okay if we don't finish it today. We can finish it next time. That's tomorrow, right? Wow, it's going to be a rough day. This is not the same problem as what we did. Uh, not quite. Close. Okay. Ten four. What time do we get done, you guys? Uh, Okay, I think we have time for t these five and six. Okay, um, let's see. So, right? One, two, three, four, five. My zero term, what am I doing every, th every time? Dividing by three or multiplying by one third. Okay, so that means my zeroth term, 27 times 3, I think is 81. So do I have everything I need? I have my first term, my zeroth term, and my common ratio. So my recursive equation is going to say f of x equals f of x minus 1 times a third. My starting point is f of 1 equals 27. Equals 27 without a parenthesis. Beautiful. My explicit, and say f of x is going to equal my zeroth term times my common ratio to the x power. And then I get f of 7 equals 81 times 1 third to the 7th power, which is 81 times 1 divided by 3 to the seventh power, point three zero three seven. Okay, one twenty seven. Nice, you guys. You guys are fat. One, two, three, four, five. One third, one ninth, one twenty seventh. Good. One twenty seventh. Nice job, you two. Esta and Khaleesi. Very good. How many of you guys, can you show me like um, thumbs up, hand raised, whatever. How many of you guys have a copy of this? Oh, you guys can pull it up from Canvas, right? A copy of the notes. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. You don't have to have it printed. I don't know why I thought you had to. You don't have to have it printed out. It's been a long day already. Okay, last one we're going to do today, and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with the rest of them. Three, four, zero term. So how am I getting from negative 2 to negative 6? Negative 6 to negative 18. Negative 18 to negative 54. What am I doing? Negative. 
nice Alex. So are my numbers getting bigger or are they getting smaller? So I just want to say this one more time. If my numbers are getting smaller like this, like this, uh, this one over here, then I'm multiplying by a fraction. If they're getting bigger, then I'm multiplying by a whole number. Does that help, Khaleesi? Yes, good. Uh, positive three, though, because my signs are not changing. They're staying the same every time. So I'm multiplying by positive three. So if I multiplied a negative times a negative, this six would be a positive. So if the signs are all the same, either positive or negative, I'm multiplying by a positive number. If my signs alternate between positive, negative, positive, negative in the sequence, then I'm multiplying by a negative number. Okay? And then my zero term, this is how I find it. I'm going to take this number right here. I'm going to take my first term. I'm going to take my first term, and I'm going to divide by my common ratio. So my zeroth term is negative two-thirds. Okay? That one's kind of a little one we haven't really talked about yet. We talked about it a little bit, but didn't really show it. Okay? Oh, okay. Um... So I've got f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 3. I almost thought that was a 2. Um, and then f of 1 equals negative 2. And then for my ex ex explicit, I've got my zeroth term, which is neg equals negative... Okay, let me just start over. Equals negative equals negative two thirds times three to the x power. And then I find f of seven equals negative two thirds times three to the seventh power, which is gonna be equal to let's see. Make that go away. Make that go away. Negative 2 divided by 3. Oh. Divided by 3. Arrow over. Times 3. Parenthesis. 7th power. Negative 1,458. 